You just need to accept that you're poorer. Yes, that is what the Bank of England said about you. How does that make you feel? Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about what is happening right now today and where we are headed. Can you believe it? They have the audacity to print to infinity and tell you, you just got to take it. I mean, this is truly unbelievable, but that's the state we're in today. I'm going to give you the details you need to know. Let's begin with this. First, Republic Bank deposits tumble more than $100 billion as it explores options. As I said in the video just recently, this isn't going away. This problem isn't going to go away. And I'm going to show you that again if you haven't seen it. I'll link to it at the end of this one. The problem is here to stay. There isn't going to be a regulation or some sort of new law that comes in place that fixes the issue. No, you have to accept that you're poorer. Do you want to actually see what that economist from the Bank of England said? Stick with me a moment. Look at this. Record high Manhattan apartment rents may not save Blackstone from default. Cash flow from the properties isn't enough to cover all the costs of the debt. And I have said this a hundred times that it is because of the debt. If the debt costs are too expensive, businesses of all kinds, especially those in finance, are going to experience this head on first. And that's why they're talking about having to cut interest rates rapidly. Home prices rose in February for the first time since June. Of course, home prices are rising. Of course, rents are astronomical. And if people can get in, they say, look, for about the same payment, I'm going to be able to get it. I understand completely. And home prices, as long as inventory remains low, they can get in. However, when interest rates stay high for a period of time, then it's a different issue. That's why they want to cut them. Miami's luxury rent surge means your money goes half as far. A $2,000 a week budget yields 50% less space than it did three years ago in the Florida hotspot. Dubai and Singapore also have seen big declines. Now you got to think about this. What has happened here? Rents have surged. Inflation is up. You're looking at food prices, energy prices, all of these things going up higher and higher. There are different reasons for each one of these, but when you print trillions of dollars, you see that things become more expensive. You can't get away from that. And that's why I always talk about the pillars of prosperity. It's important that we get a handle on this for our own sake. Really important, okay? Pillars of prosperity, increase your income, also have that self-sufficiency. These two things are going to help you whether not just this storm, but any storm. Pillars of prosperity, the money GPS, you could search that out if you're interested. It's a video that explains it all. UK mortgage rates triple in nasty shock for homeowners. About 1.4 million mortgages will be refinanced this year, and most of them are currently at rates of below 2%. Think about that. You are at 2%, paying very little in the total amount of interest. Now, suddenly it's double or triple, you're going to get crushed. So what are they going to do? Well, unless those rates come down real fast, they are going to be struggling to pay that. And then we could potentially see inventory go higher. I don't know. We will have to see how that goes. What about this? Step beside Buffett. Today's money moguls are moving fast. This article is basically just talking about all these different individuals, Ken Griffin, and all these people that you may have heard of before, how they're making so much money, they've got billions and billions. And while there are some people and some groups and some places of the world that are doing very well, we see the other side of that. The Bank of England's top economist has said people in the UK, and by the way, it's everywhere, need to accept that they are poor, otherwise prices will continue to rise your fault. It's your fault. That's what he's saying. If you don't accept that you're poor and learn to live with your lower standard, well then, inflation is your fault, not the trillions printed by the central banks, and it's not the government printing trillions and handing that off to bankers, corporations in your country and foreign ones too. That is what they say. Now, it's not this individual it's not this one person. It's the same thing everywhere. All the central bankers do the same thing. All the, politi all the politicians do the same thing. And of course, those in the corporations, 
who do they have you know whose interests are, are they serving look let me let me show you a little bit more though i think it's i think it's important here you can see you know people in the u.s they're reluctant to accept that yes we're all worse off he said in response to higher bills and other costs rising workers had responded by asking for wage increases and businesses were charging more uk inflation the rate of which prices rise was 10.1 percent in the year to march you, you know <laughs> the way that they talk about this it's like unbelievable anyway quote someone needs to accept they're worse off the quote is somehow in the uk someone needs to accept that they're worse off and stop trying to maintain their real spending power by bidding up prices whether they're through higher wages or passing energy costs on to consumers etc what we're facing is that we have a reluctance to accept that yes we're all worse off and we all have to take our share to try to pass that cost onto one of our compatriots saying we'll be all right but they will have to take our share too that past the parcel game here it's going on that game is one that's generating inflation and part of that inflation can persist they say this with wage inflation and so on. Hey, don't ask for a raise. You're only generating inflation. Just accept that you're poor. Don't eat what you want to eat. Eat the bugs. I guess that's right. But I guess I forgot the second part, which is not only should I be eating the bugs, but I got to be happy about it. Let me know what you think about this. This is a very serious topic. I try to make it light. I try to kind of joke about it. But in the end, they're doing this. They're making it happen. U.S. consumer confidence falls for the third time in the in four months. Okay, so obviously people worried about inflation and so on, and you could see it hitting stores. Perfect example here: McDonald's. McDonald's diners are pushing back against price increases in some markets, according to the CEO. And certainly, this is one place where people are looking for an affordable meal. And I'm not exactly sure what it costs at McDonald's to eat, but I'm going to have to venture a guess that it has gone up quite a bit over the years. I remember when I was much younger, I'd be able to take five bucks and eat a meal. That was possible. I'm not so sure that that's possible today. I'm sure there's like specials and you can get the deal of the day and all that stuff. Uh, but generally, the prices have risen considerably much higher than the actual. If you look at the actual food inflation rate, and you were to calculate that from the time that you remember up until now, I have a feeling the price has gone a lot beyond that. Would you agree? Okay, Alphabet hits first quarter top earnings, announces the $70 billion buyback. So there are companies out there that are doing well, that are going to do well, that will use the capital that they have to buy their stock back, which will push the price up. These companies aren't going to suffer. They're not going to have an issue. 3M is going to cut thousands of jobs as sales struggle. That will push the stock price up as well. How about this? Gap plans to lay off hundreds of corporate workers in the latest cuts. Same thing here. Then we get some little bit of evidence as to what's happening in the economy. Real stuff. Sliding diesel prices signal warning for the U.S. economy, what they're calling freight recession, means fewer trucks are carrying goods across the country. And connected in with that is this. ATA truck tonnage index decreased 5.4% in March. So all of these things, I know it's a lot of stuff, but what I'm trying to show you is that slowdown is appearing in some places, but in other places it's doing well. And I kind of want to give you that the whole picture, okay? Because it's not going to do you any good if I just focus on one thing, but you stayed until the end. So you got the real deal. This is big. Federal Reserve money supply M2 year over year change continues to fall and what does that mean well the amount of money in circulation declining going down and that means there is a slowdown overall and we get that think about it like the money has to keep moving within the banking system it's got to be created out of thin air they loan this money out to businesses businesses then take that they hire people they buy stuff they buy real estate they need inventory, whatever the case is, the economy gets going, okay? They buy the inventory, consumers are, are buying that stuff, back and forth, back and forth is moving. It's, it's, it's going through this 
currency, current, right? Uh, but what up? Well, what happens if all that money is just sitting there? And what about if that is actually being reduced? Well, then we start to see a contraction. That means the economy is shrinking to a certain degree. That's what's being experienced today. Incredible. We're seeing it right here and now. Okay. I told you what's going to happen with the banking system. And I think it's pretty obvious. And for people who hadn't seen that, you've got to see this. Okay. So just recently, I posted this video. I explained all the details you need to know. In fact, I did so right at the beginning of the video. So you don't have to wait to get the real deal right here. Click it. I'll see you there.